Welcome back to 17 on set. Fermented foods are all the rage right now from kombucha to vegetables and with all sorts of purported health benefits. But are they worth the hype? Joining us this morning, Nicole Jamara, a registered dietitian, to talk a little bit more about what exactly they are and what they can do for you. Good morning, Nicole. Hi. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. So first off, what is a fermented food? So fermentation basically is a process by which a, which a beneficial microbe, usually a bacteria or a yeast, uh, starts to feed off the natural sugars in these foods. And when it does that, uh, it produces lactic acid and carbon dioxide, among other things, and that changes the flavor, the texture, the nutritional value, and the shelf life of that particular food. So, I mean, I've heard all kinds of claims mm -hmm. um, about fermented foods. Some of them, you know, from preventing cancer to all kinds of, to diabetes and blood pressure, right. but what, what do we really know that they can do for us? Well, we do know that the fermentation process does make some nutrients more um, easily digested, with particularly um, lactose in dairy products like kefir or um, fermented yogurts. Mm -hmm. So, the bacteria helps to break down that lactose so people that can't typically tolerate dairy products might have an easier time with those and also the um, fermentation process in vegetables such as sauerkraut and kimchi it helps to make certain nutrients like vitamin C and other phytochemicals more easily absorbed into the body and we're also talking about things like um, providing antioxidants fighting inflammation absolutely, and absolutely. then gut health right and gut health yes and um, fermentation does actually make the foods rich in probiotics however not all fermented foods Foods are a probiotic food. So any any time that uh, a food has been heat processed for jarring, canning, or pasteurization, it's going to kill all those beneficial microbes. So while tempeh, a fermented soy product, is a really good source of plant-based protein and fiber, it doesn't actually contain any live cultures. So for gut health, if you're looking to use fermented foods for that purpose, you want to look for things that in, are in the refrigerated section. So the kefirs, the yogurt, kombucha, sauerkraut that's fresh and not canned, kimchi as well. And you know, one thing that I'm always curious about, because I do love kombucha, mm -hmm. do I need to be worried about the sugar content? Because sugar is used in the fermentation Absolutely. process, right? Absolutely. So it is. So the, the kombucha is a fermented black or green tea, and then it usually has some fruit juice added into it just for sweetness and flavor. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the sugar content compared to, say, a, a sugary soda, or even some people like it as a substitute for cocktails or wine, it's actually very, very low. It has okay. less than a teaspoon of sugar. So it actually is a really good substitute for other sugary beverages. And if you're consuming it in moderation, it really is not a problem. All right, very interesting. Is there anything we need to be uh, conscious about when, when adding these to our diet? In general, fermented foods are absolutely safe for most people. The only thing that we do caution um, people to be kind of cognizant of is um, kombucha, especially home-brewed kombuchas, which are really popular, mm -hmm. uh, really are not recommended for women that are pregnant or nursing or people that are immune compromised, only because we just can't be 100% sure that food safety protocols have been followed in the home setting. Okay. All right. Some great information. Thanks so much for joining Thanks. us this morning. We appreciate it. Sure. All right. We'll be right back after this.